Morning friends, how's it going? So when I just build a saw, this is one thing I always do. It's it's the next day. It's the day after I posted the video on this saw. And uh, I just about crashed there. You guys see that? The chair got away on me. Just about spun a bearing. <laughs> this isn't what we're working on today, friends. You guys are asking about the pipe. I don't know what kind of pipe I'm going to put on this. We'll figure that out when... Uh, I got a couple of pipes I need to weld, so I'll probably do all my welding at the same time. I got my steel, still, however you want to say it. Now, friends, there's a lot of Germans around here, and they say a still. They really shh. So, I don't know the proper pronunciation, but I say still, steel, still. Let's see if this thing starts. This hat will make it start, but I do this with every saw. It's been sitting overnight. Put my, oh yeah, that's good. Let's fire this thing up. Full choke. You guys ready? Interesting. So that's full choke. see what I just did there? I gave this thing an eighth more turn on the low jet and tomorrow I'll start it again. I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit strange with my break-in procedures. This thing's not fully broken in friends. I don't expect it to start good but I'd like three pulls, maybe four before it pops. I don't know what that was. I think it was four or five so um, we'll see. Anyways I wanted to show you guys that uh, I gotta clean up the bench here a little bit, not too, too much. We need some of these tools, but. So there you go, 03 Mag, it does start. Uh, I'm gonna pause you guys here, clean up the bench a little bit, and let's get going on the farmer tack. I'm excited, let's do this. Okay, so I'm not gonna do a nut and bolt uh, build of this saw. I find all that content to be super boring, and I'm sure there's other people that'll do a way better job of that than me. Um, I will give you guys the, the PowerPoint presentation on assembling a chainsaw. A lot of you guys that are here have probably done this already or have done a saw before. This is more for if you've never, ever, ever assembled a chainsaw from a box of parts, this is for you. If you're looking for a 288, you know, uh, three, four hundred bucks gets you one of these kits. They're not as cheap as they once were, friends, but what we're going to find out, they've gone up in price. Have they gone up in quality? I never bought these before, friends, these kits, because I talked to guys, and guys would be like, yeah, I bought a 660 kit, but I needed, you know, $250 worth of parts, OEM parts, because this is no good, that's no good, I needed a new crank, I needed an oiler. And to me, I thought, well, why don't I just buy a blown up 660 and rebuild it? That's how my brain works. So um, I've stayed away from these things like the plague. But you know what, friends? I've had enough emails and interest in them that we're going to do one. Okay, so you're, you're new to building saws. Well, I'm going to put this together with heat, friends, okay? There's a problem with that that I already see. Now, I don't have the assembly tools to pull this saw together, or at least I think I don't. I might have a way around that, okay? Um, but anyways, I'm gonna try and put this together with heat. We will talk about that as I'm doing it. So first thing you do, you got this big box of kits and it's like, what do I do with all these parts? I don't know where they go. Well, first thing you need, friends, is your cases, okay? Your crankshaft. Here's your crankshaft right here. I'm gonna leave it in the box. You need your gasket. Now. Here's the hard part, friends. I'm going to bring you guys in here. There's just a giant box of screws, nuts, bolts. Here we go. Okay. Look at all this stuff, friends. Don't mind that. A messy bench is a productive bench, I think. Maybe it's the other way around. 
Okay, you get all these nuts and bolts. So how do you figure out which bolts are for what? Well, one, two, three, four. I'll put the light on here for you guys. Okay, so right there, you know you have four. One, two, three, four. You have four case bolts. And they look like they're going to be fairly long. So start going through and looking. Oh, right here. Those look about right. And those would go into here. Okay, well then, okay, so there goes those four bolts. Now, we need two bolts to hold on the dogs. Okay, friends, you're going to need your dogs. Here's one. All right, this goes right here. So you're, you're going to want to put your dog on right away, or not. You could do it after, but, okay. Now, look, look how long this is from here to here. So right there, it's like, hey, I need two of the same bolts that are longer. Well, here they are, okay? I'm gonna heat this up and try it with the heat method. And if we cook the bear or cook the seal, we cook the seal. If you have the puller, uh, skip past this part. I don't have the factory tool, so we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it the heat way. Okay, friends. I am gonna slowly and gently heat this bearing. Okay. Now again, there are other ways to do this. I don't have the proper puller, so I don't have the factory Husqvarna tool. If you do skip this, I expect most of you are not going to have that tool, so. Um, I put together things with heat. You know why? This works with everything. Every saw, except for the ones with plastic bearings, but I tend to not work on those. They're the plastic race bearings. Even that, I put them together. So, I like universal. Now, I have a feeling that this is going to be slightly not the way to do it, but even if we can get it in halfway and then pull the crank through with the nut. Okay. This heat gun is super, super hot. Okay, we're starting to get smoke. That's usually an indicator that we have enough heat. I mean, you can smell it burning. Okay. Now remember, friends, if this crank seal lets go, it's probably because I did this. There you go. Boom. I'll just leave it. Okay. If you want it to cool off right away, just hit it with some air. Okay, friends? It's in there. Once you do that, it's in there. There's no, there's no moving it. Now, I don't think I melted that crank seal, so... If we, if we did, I'll, I'll admit it later. Okay. Good to go. Now, the other thing I don't like about the seal being in, and I'm going to say this, I'm just, I'm not ranting about this saw. It is what it is. But what bothers me, friends, is I like to install my bearings with no seals in so that I can relieve the end play. If there's side load on this bearing, right, like here, friends, this bearing has tension on it now, not because the bearing has side load, but because the seal is grabbing. So if, if I have side load on this bearing with the seal in, I, I can't feel it as good. You know what I mean? So, um, if you have the tool, pull this because you won't have the problem with side load that you do when you put it together with heat. Okay. I'll show you guys all this. I'm just uh, yakking as I put this thing together. Okay, let's let this thing cool off and let's prep the cases and get it ready to assemble. Just gonna wipe down the case halves with some brake clean. Okay, prep them all. Make sure they're shiny, 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 clean. Um, I've never had a, a case leak. It does happen. You wanna make sure that it's clean. There's no rough spots. This pin keeps falling out, this lineup dowel here. So be aware of that in your kit. If, if you have the same kit as this, you may. Just make sure that that's in there. Okay, same thing. Prep this side. Okay. I don't know. I don't like taking them apart again because I cut corners or something, you know? So um, I, like, I like to make sure that my cases don't leak. So I'll just try and make everything clean. Now... Next thing, okay, next thing, here's what I use, friends, Moto Seal, gasket maker, 
Uh, it's a Permatex product. Once again, here's the, I just wiped off the schmutz that's on there. Number 29-132, Moto Seal. I've been using this stuff forever. I've used many, many, many tubes of it. I've never had a bad tube. I've never had a leak with this stuff. I've never had a cylinder leak. I've never, I've never experienced any of that stuff, friends. So, um, just letting you know, use whatever you like, whatever you're comfy with. We all use the products that we think are good. Are they better than the next guys? Probably not. If the next guy's using a product and he's had no trouble with it, it's probably a good product, but we all, uh, we all get set in our ways. Yes, you can use a brush or whatever you want to use. I'm old school. I use my finger. It's a universal applicator. It works on all makes, models, and brands. Oh, I got a little there. It works for application and removal of the product. Okay, now, friends, you want to put this on as thin as possible. A little goes a long way. Try and keep it out of the saw. If a little gets in the saw, it usually doesn't hurt anything. I'm not going to say 100% of the time it's not going to do something, but I've never had a problem. It usually will flow into the transfers on the case. Uh, I noticed that. I've seen that in saws I've put together, saws other people have put together. Um, that's a thing. Put our case gasket in here. Now, one thing I'm going to do right now, friends, is this needs to be cut. I don't like leaving that in. Sometimes it can make your your uh, your gasket move around. So I'm actually going to cut it off. Just most of it, not all of it. Okay, I'm going to cut it off. And there, now there's no connector there. Okay, and I'm going to put this down. There and there. Okay. Now all that does basically is holds the gasket in place. Okay, notice that all the holes line up. Okay, now I'm gonna quickly heat this. Now I may or may not edit some of the heating process. I just try and get a little bit of heat into my case, okay, into my bearing rather. Now I'll shut this off after heating it for a bit. I'm going to move this case over, okay, same thing. Put your gasket material or your gasket maker, your sealant onto Okay, onto your gasket. I love showing you guys this stuff. I get tons of emails uh, when I do a bottom end saying thank you. Um, friends, I had somebody show me this years ago how they do chainsaw cylinders and uh, I've been doing them ever since like this. I've everything from 562s, 576s, 461s, McCullough's, well maybe not McCullough's because you got to heat, I heat the bearing to put the bearing on the crankshaft in a McCullough, but you guys get the idea. I, I use the heat method on every power saw that I work on, and you guys know if you've been here, I work on everything. Every make, model, brand, vintage, I will work on at one time or another on this channel. So that's why I just kind of like to have universal methods that work for everything. You don't really need to seal back here, but I just do. I feel like that couple thousands you get with the sealant, if it's uniform, I just find it's better on the cases. Whether it is or not, I don't know. Okay, there you go, friends. Now this stuff's gonna skin up right away. We have little to no working time with it, okay? I'm gonna put this as far away as I can to not transfer any heat, and then boom, I'm gonna hit this right away. Getting it as hot as I can. There we go. Bearing is starting to smoke. I'm gonna hold this on there and keep it hot. Here's our other case. Hey friends, are you ready? Make sure 
Your crankshaft is up and down, just like this, okay? Now watch this, friends. I'm gonna do this as quickly as I can. I'm gonna put my, I'm gonna put my heat gun down, flip this over. Boom, together. Okay, friends? Now, every time I do that, and I'm gonna tell you guys this right now, wear gloves, because that was super, super hot, and you think I'd know that by now. After, I do this, almost every saw that runs through this shop at one time or another ends up needing a bottom end. Okay, put your four bolts. These are the most important bolts, friends. These are the ones you wanna cinch down. Okay. You can put sealant on them if you want. I'm not going to in this case. Uh, you can put locked or a thread locker on them if you want. Okay, putting these down. I guess these were the right screws. And again, if you're not sure what fits what, just pre-assemble. Put a few screws in the case. Okay. I'm doing this in real time, friends, because I like you guys to see how long do things take. That way, you know, am I doing it right? Is it is why is this taking me too long? Or this is how long this takes? About half an hour, maybe, not even 20 minutes. Now, um, don't go yelling at your chainsaw mechanic if he charges you two, three hours to do a bottom end, because remember. You gotta tear the saw down, you gotta clean all the parts. This is a brand new case, therefore the parts are already clean. That saves me an hour probably. Jordan Mark, thanks buddy. <laughs> I love that knife. I use that thing all the time. Okay, next two case bolts are right here. I'm gonna slam those in, because I'll, I'll forget. I know me, I'll forget to put them in. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so it looks like we have our first problem, friends. The hole in this dog is not big enough, okay? So there's there's our first issue with this kit. Yeah, the holes are mis, mis drilled. Uh, I'll be right back, friends. I'm just gonna grind. I gotta grind a little bit off this. See if we can get that to focus, focus, focus. I ground the back and this corner, okay? Now it looks like it fits, so. I've met some really, really awesome people through YouTube. It's not it's not the power saws either. It's the it's the life, you know. We're all the same friends. Like I have friends all over the world, all over the states now, and it's like the struggle is the same for all of us, and it's it's good. You you make that connection, you know. So anyhow, now I think I think I I I, I got the wrong bolt going here friends just let me see if I can find the right one I think that be the one yeah for sure it is okay for the back of the case put that in I don't know the torque spec on these tight that's my torque spec can never be too tight I've never had one come out and I've also never stripped one so I don't know once this cools down, I usually want to go over it and give it another, you know. Okay, friends, so you're going to be living life right now. Wow, I just put my first bottom end together. And you're going to be like, oh, you're going to want to call your buddies. You're going to show your wife. She's not going to be interested, but she's going to pretend to because that's what our wives do for us, friends. <laughs> and then you're going to go like this. Ready? 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 And you're going to go, oh. Why? Why? Why is that so stiff? And you're gonna say, why? Ugh. It's like, and then you're gonna call your buddy. You're gonna be like, dude, the bottom end's like stiff. Like I broke something. I, I think I broke the crankshaft or the bearings or like, should I run it like that? And then you're gonna go on the internet and you're gonna look for crankshaft stiff, any of that stuff, friends. That's totally normal. When you put this together, okay. You're putting a slight side load on the bearing. Now, okay, friends, we got you backed off here. Now, so this thing's tight, right? And we know that the crank is this way because there's less of a gap there. 
Now what you're gonna do, friends, you're gonna take this nut, this is how I do it, put it on the end here, if you're worried about boogering up the crank, okay? Take it, hit this thing like it owes you money, okay? Back that way. Now, oh, we moved the crank over this way now. Ready? Beauty. Look at this, friends. Hope you guys can see this. I gotta put the light on. There we go. Okay. Okay, friends. Can you see the gap there? There's a gap there. Look. Same gap on the other side. Now we know that our crank is centered. And look. Now, again, this is going to be a little tricky if you've never built a bottom end. There will be tension on this crankshaft. And there is right now, okay? That's from the seal, friends, okay? There's a slight tension. That is from this crank seal being pre-installed, okay? So right away, if I was going to buy this kit and I'd never done this before, I think I would buy an extra set of crank seals just because, okay? I would just do that. That's just me. You guys don't have to do that, but if you're a novice and you're not sure, I would pop that crank seal out so that you can feel what a bottom end should feel like, okay? And again, whack it one way and then the other way and you'll get it centered and now this thing's smooth as butter, okay? With no oil in it too. Now, what do you, where do you go from here, friends? Well, that's it. That is an assembled bottom end, okay? Pretty cool, eh? It didn't take that long. I tried to do it as quickly, but as slowly as possible. Um, hopefully you guys got something out of that. So, what did you guys think? Uh, I think we're getting places here. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is there's still a little bit of heat in this. Now, tomorrow, is. Sometimes, I usually don't build an entire saw in one day, but if you have to, it is what it is. Tomorrow, sometimes I'll find this crank might need to be whacked again once it cools down. There's still a little bit of heat in this crankshaft, I can feel it. Probably not enough to do anything, but I usually like to adjust them when there's a little bit of heat because they move easier. Only problem with that is you can move it way too far one way and way too far the other way, but uh, I just use one of these. I try and use the plastic side. If the plastic side won't work, I will hit it. Uh, this is copper, okay? Uh, the best thing to use would be a good brass hammer, okay? Um, I just, I like this one. I've had this thing for years and it works good for me. So um, I'm gonna keep using it. Okay, friends, well, we've started. Um, in the next part of the series, I'll probably put the coil flywheel, oil pump, all that kind of stuff on, and then we can slip the handle in, fuel and oil cap, uh, there, we need to put the oil pump uh, pickup line here. Um, there is some damage to the handle that I'll have to repair, but we'll do that together, and uh, we'll have a running power saw in probably three videos, friends. What I'm trying to do right now, I got all that wood to buck up. So I just finished the 03 Magnum, I'm gonna put this thing together and run it. And then I got a 266 or two to build. I'm trying to get everything done and then we can buck up wood. Now, in between all that, my wife is growing a life inside of her. So um, who knows what's gonna happen, friends. I will keep you posted. We could be having a baby in as little as a week or as long as a month. So um, keep your fingers crossed. I'm hoping for three to four weeks, but if we have one in a week, we are ready to rock and roll. Anyhow, friends. Farmer Tech 288 kit, I had no problems with it. So at this point, these cases are good. The bearings are in the pockets well. These bearings feel fine to me. So um, the only thing I'm scared of is the crankshaft. But again, we'll try and blow this thing up, friends. And if it does blow up, then we know. Um, I will probably port this thing after it's been run a bit, just because why not? Um, I know a lot of you guys want to port these and you want to know if the crank is good. Um, so we'll find out. Anyhow, friends, as always, thanks for watching. Take it easy. Later.